Peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text is from the reading from Revelation, verses 13 and 14. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where do they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There ends a text. Dear fellow redeemed, in the past, things were more peaceful in our society. And our remembrance of All Saints Day took on a little different character than what it has today. In the past, on All Saints Day, we thought about our grandparents our spouses, our loved ones who have preceded us in death and who died in faith. We remember their example of faithfulness through the years. We thank Jesus for his victory over their death and his promise of eternal life given to them. And we look to those same gifts of forgiveness and eternal life given to us so that we could join them one day in Christ's heavenly kingdom. But today, I think our focus on All Saints Day takes on a slightly different character. The world today is not the quiet, simple place where Grandma and Grandpa used to live. It's more the place where St. Paul and St. Peter used to live. Today's world is a place where Christianity is openly singled out and held up to ridicule. Hatred for Christian beliefs is almost expected in our society. In fact, when we see a public figure who stands up and doesn't renounce his Christianity, it's almost shocking. This is a radically different world than the one that many of us grew up in. Now we Christians know we can't just sit back and take our faith for granted. We are forced to recognize life as a as a living and death exercise of faith. Our lives could literally be taken away from us because we believe in Jesus. Put yourself in the shoes of those college students who little over a month ago were faced with a Christian-hating gunman, where he asked for the Christians to identify themselves and then kills them where they stood because of their faith. Would you have admitted to being a Christian? after you saw your other classmates murdered in front of your eyes because of their confession of faith? And this happened right here in our country. The exact same thing actually plays out virtually every single day in some part of the world. We just don't hear it in the news. During this past year alone, in Kenya, The same scenario played out. College students asked whether they were Christian or not. Those who confessed Christ were shot in the head where they stood. Over 100 students murdered because they stood with Christ. Then there were the 21 Syrian martyrs lined up and beheaded because they confessed their faith in Jesus. The video of their beheading shows them speaking Jesus' name, praying for strength to endure in the very moment their heads are cut off. That's our world. You confess Christ, you die. All Saints Day reminds us who we are and what Christ's place truly is in our lives these days. It is not enough on All Saints Day just to remember Grandma and Grandpa who lived simple simple Christian lives in humility and faith and now live with Jesus in heaven. All Saints Day also points us to the cross. The cross that Jesus embraced in order to shed his blood and win our eternal life and the cross that now follows us as believers in Jesus. St. John, who was the only one of the twelve apostles not killed for his confession of faith, describes heaven as a place filled with men and women of bravery and courage. Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. All Saints' Day reminds us of 
what it's like to live in this great tribulation, this time of intense suffering for Christ. It's a time through which all the saints have to pass in one way or another. The great tribulation, the time of suffering, comes with this faith, and it is no escape. And yet, those who suffer under this intense tribulation are not destroyed by it. Nor do they face it alone in misery. But their Savior Christ faces it with them at their side. He was there washing them, making them white in His blood in the very moment of their suffering. And we, in our world, as we are called upon to confess Christ and take our lumps for it, we know that we're not suffering as victims. We don't go through life bemoaning some kind of victimization. We see our Savior there in the middle of this suffering. We see suffering in His hands and being used by Him in such a way as to confess Him, and to confess the true nature of what He came in this world to do for sinners like us. In fact, Jesus reminds us that our suffering as Christians works for our good. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The truth that we have to reckon with today in our day is that this cross and this persecution is never far from Christ and never far from us as we follow him. But we as Jesus' children can face it. And that cross doesn't frighten us and doesn't shut us down and make us hide. Because we know that our Savior used a cross in order to bring eternal life to us. On his cross, he purchased us, body and soul. We are his. And we are saved now from this world that would destroy him and his message and us along with it. His blood spilled out on his cross, running down the beams of the cross, was the price paid so that we might join the ranks of God's saints. Crosses don't destroy us. They shape us. They reveal the hand of Jesus working for our good. Shakespeare once famously wrote, A coward dies a thousand deaths, but the valiant taste of death but once. All saints' day is our day as Christians to find strength and courage in the one who has overcome the world and crushed the power of Satan. Fear of hatred and ridicule for our faith. It doesn't kill us. We don't die a thousand deaths. We die only once, and then in the arms of our shepherd who cradles us like his beloved lambs, saving us once and for all from the hatred of this world. My friends, you are not of this world. Your ties to this world were cut the moment Jesus baptized you and gave you his word of life. You confessed your sins here today. You confessed your weakness and helplessness in this world. Jesus told you your sins were forgiven and sin went away from you. All of your sin went away from you. This world, its selfish pride, its hatred of Jesus, its lies, that all went away from you. And your gracious Savior put a new heart in your chest. He gave you when he forgave you. He gave you the very thing those brave saints had who stood before the haters of Christ and took a bullet in the head for him. He put his Holy Spirit into you 
to overcome the cowardly spirit of this world within you. Because your Savior loves you enough to give you His forgiveness, you do stand shoulder to shoulder with His saints as one of them. As St. John thought about how Jesus overcame the world, he couldn't help but give voice to a sense of awe at the magnitude of God's love in all of this. He says in the reading today, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. When we look within ourselves, within our own hearts, we know we're not worthy of being called children of God in the same breath that those people are who died as they confessed Christ. We see in our past the many examples of cowardice where we hid our confession of Jesus or toned it down so as not to offend the world around us. We see how we let ourselves chase our sins and our lusts. How we dragged others down with us into the mire of our own making. We see those moments when we lost all sense and let our inner rage and temper run away from us with curses and blasphemies. When we do look in our own heart, we may very well ask, who are we kidding? We're weak. We're cowardly. We have failed to live out our confession. We have no right today to claim a place with those people who stood strong in the name of Christ, even at the expense of their own life. We'd be right to think that. It's true. None of us have lived up to the expectations or up to the power of the grace given to us. And John knows it. St. John himself hadn't lived without sin or failure in himself. But this is the reason why he stands in such awe of the love of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of men. We, we are called children of God. We are transformed by forgiveness and grace that erases this lifelong record of weakness and failure. We are washed clean by the blood of Jesus. We are made children of God. And it's that identity, that identity is beloved children of God that we leave here with today and go back out into the world with all its hatred of Christ, with all its temptations. And there, with our new identity as God's children, we confess Him openly, clearly, without fear, as one of His saints. We do it because we are His saints, washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, redeemed by the love of a Savior. All Saints' Day then strengthens us it grants us courage from the Savior whose own courageous life and death gave us all things needful for eternal life. May Jesus this day give us that courage to live as his saints for his sake. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess together our saving faith with the words of the Nicene Creed on page 174.